All Israel was listed in the genealogies recorded in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah. They were taken captive to Babylon because of their unfaithfulness. Now the first to resettle on their own property in their own towns were some Israelites, priests, Levites, and temple servants. Those from Judah, from Benjamin, and from Ephraim and Manasseh who lived in Jerusalem were Uthai, son of Amiah, the son of Omri, the son of Imri, the son of Benai, a descendant of Perez, son of Judah. Of the Shelonites, Asaiah, the firstborn, and his sons. Of the Zerahites, Jeul, the people from Judah, numbered 690. Of the Benjamites, Salu, son of Meshulam, the son of Hodaviah, the son of Hashanua, Ibnia, son of Jeroham, Elah, son of Uzai, the son of Mikri, and Meshulam, son of Shephatiah, the son of Ruel, the son of Ibnijah. The people from Benjamin, as listed in their genealogy, numbered 956. All these men were heads of their families. Of the priests, Judea, Jehoiarib, Jachin, Azariah, son of Hilkiah, the son of Mishalem, the son of Zadok, the son of Mereath, the son of Ahitab, the official in charge of the house of God, Adea, son of Jeroham, the son of Pasher, the son of Milkaijah, and Meusai, son of Adil, the son of Jazura, the son of Mishalem, the son of Mishalemith, the son of Immer. The priests, who were heads of families, numbered 1,760. They were able men, responsible for ministering in the house of God. Of the Levites, Shemaiah, son of Hashem, the son of Azrakam, the son of Hashabiah, a Merarite, Bakbakar, Hirish, Galil, and Mataniah, son of Micah, the son of Zikri, the son of Asaph, Obadiah, son of Shemaiah, the son of Galil, the son of Jejuthun, and Berechiah, son of Asa, the son of Elkanah, who lived in the villages of the Netophathites. The gatekeepers, Shalom, Akab, Talman, Ahiman and their fellow Levites, Shalom their chief being stationed at the king's gate on the east up to the present time. These were the gatekeepers belonging to the camp of the Levites. Shalom, son of Kori, the son of Ibiasaph, the son of Korah, and his fellow gatekeepers from his family, the Korahites, were responsible for guarding the thresholds of the tent just as their ancestors had been responsible for guarding the entrance to the dwelling of the Lord. In earlier times, Phineas, son of Eleazar, was the official in charge of the gatekeepers, and the Lord was with him. Zechariah, son of Meshelemiah, was the gatekeeper at the entrance to the tent of meeting. Altogether, those chosen to be gatekeepers at the thresholds numbered 212, they were registered by genealogy in their villages. The gatekeepers had been assigned to their positions of trust by David and Samuel, the seer. They and their descendants were in charge of guarding the gates of the house of the Lord, the house called the Tent of Meeting. The gatekeepers were on the four sides, east, west, north, and south, their fellow Levites in their villages had to come from time to time and share their duties for seven-day periods. But the four principal gatekeepers, who were Levites, were entrusted with the responsibility for the rooms and treasuries in the house of God. They would spend the night stationed around the house of God because they had to guard it, and they had charge of the key for opening it each morning. Some of them were in charge of the articles used in the temple service. They counted them when they were brought in and when they were taken out. 
Others were assigned to take care of the furnishings and all the other articles of the sanctuary, as well as the special flour and wine, and the oil, incense, and spices. But some of the priests took care of mixing the spices. A Levite named Mattathiah, the firstborn son of Shalom, the Korahite, was entrusted with the responsibility for baking the offering bread. Some of the Korathites, their fellow Levites, were in charge of preparing for every Sabbath the bread set out on the table. Those who were musicians, heads of Levite families, stayed in the rooms of the temple and were exempt from other duties because they were responsible for the work day and night. All these were heads of Levite families, chiefs as listed in their genealogy, and they lived in Jerusalem. Jeiel, the father of Gibeon, lived in Gibeon. His wife's name was Meuka, and his firstborn son was Abdon, followed by Zer, Kish, Baal, Ner, Nadab, Gidor, Ahio, Zechariah, and Mikloth. Mikloth was the father of Shimeon. They too lived near their relatives in Jerusalem. Ner was the father of Kish, Kish the father of Saul, and Saul the father of Jonathan, Malkishua, Abinadab, and Eshbaal. The son of Jonathan, Merib Baal, who was the father of Micah. The sons of Micah, Python, Melik, Taria, and Ahaz. Ahaz was the father of Jada. Jada was the father of Alameth, Asmaveth, and Zimri. And Zimri was the father of Moza. Moza was the father of Binia. Rephaia was his son. Eliasa his son, and Azel his son. Azel had six sons, and these were their names, Azrikam, Bokaru, Ishmael, Sheariah, Obadiah, and Hanan. These were the sons of Azel. Now the Philistines fought against Israel. The Israelites fled before them, and many fell dead on Mount Gilboa. The Philistines were in hot pursuit of Saul and his sons, and they killed his sons, Jonathan, Abinadab, and Malkishua. The fighting grew fierce around Saul, and when the archers overtook him, they wounded him. Saul said to his armor bearer, Draw your sword and run me through, or these uncircumcised fellows will come and abuse me. But his armor-bearer was terrified and would not do it, so Saul took his own sword and fell on it. When the armor-bearer saw that Saul was dead, he too fell on his sword and died. So Saul and his three sons died, and all his house died together. When all the Israelites in the valley saw that the army had fled and that Saul and his sons had died, they abandoned their towns and fled and the Philistines came and occupied them. The next day, when the Philistines came to strip the dead, they found Saul and his sons fallen on Mount Gilboa. They stripped him and took his head and his armor and sent messengers throughout the land of the Philistines to proclaim the news among their idols and their people. They put his armor in the temple of their gods and hung up his head in the temple of Dagon. When all the inhabitants of Jabesh Gilead heard what the Philistines had done to Saul, all their valiant men went and took the bodies of Saul and his sons and brought them to Jabesh. Then they buried their bones under the great tree in Jabesh, and they fasted seven days. Saul died because he was unfaithful to the Lord. He did not keep the word of the Lord, and even consulted a medium for guidance, and did not inquire of the Lord. So the Lord put him to death and turned the kingdom over to David, son of Jesse. All Israel came together to David at Hebron and said, We are your own flesh and blood. In the past, even while Saul was king, you were the one who led Israel on their military campaigns. And the Lord your God said to you, 
You will shepherd my people Israel, and you will become their ruler. When all the elders of Israel had come to King David at Hebron, he made a covenant with them at Hebron before the Lord, and they anointed David king over Israel as the Lord had promised through Samuel. David and all the Israelites marched to Jerusalem, that is, Jebus. The Jebusites who lived there said to David, You will not get in here. Nevertheless, David captured the fortress of Zion, which is the city of David. David had said, Whoever leads the attack on the Jebusites will become commander-in-chief. Joab, son of Zeruiah, went up first, and so he received the command. David then took up residence in the fortress, and so it was called the City of David. He built up the city around it, from the terraces to the surrounding wall, while Joab restored the rest of the city, and David became more and more powerful because the Lord Almighty was with him. These were the chiefs of David's mighty warriors. They, together with all Israel, gave his kingship strong support to extend it over the whole land as the Lord had promised. This is the list of David's mighty warriors. Jeshobiam, a Hakmonite, was chief of the officers. He raised his spear against 300 men whom he killed in one encounter. Next to him was Eleazar, son of Dodai the Ahohite one of the three mighty warriors. He was with David at Pasdanim when the Philistines gathered there for battle. At a place where there was a field full of barley, the troops fled from the Philistines, but they took their stand in the middle of the field. They defended it and struck the Philistines down, and the Lord brought about a great victory. Three of the thirty chiefs came down to David to the rock at the cave of Adullam, while a band of Philistines was encamped in the valley of Rephaim. At that time, David was in the stronghold, and the Philistine garrison was at Bethlehem. David longed for water and said, Oh, that someone would give me a drink of water from the well near the gate of Bethlehem. So the three broke through the Philistine lines, drew water from the well near the gate of Bethlehem, and carried it back to David. But he refused to drink it. Instead, he poured it out to the Lord. God forbid that I should do this, he said. Should I drink the blood of these men who went at the risk of their lives? Because they risked their lives to bring it back, David would not drink it. Such were the exploits of the three mighty warriors. Obishai, the brother of Joab, was chief of the three. He raised his spear against 300 men whom he killed, and so he became as famous as the three. He was doubly honored above the three and became their commander, even though he was not included among them. Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, a valiant fighter from Kabziel, performed great exploits. He struck down Moab's two mightiest warriors. He also went down into a pit on a snowy day and killed a lion. And he struck down an Egyptian who was five cubits tall. Although the Egyptian had a spear like a weaver's rod in his hand, Benea went against him with a club. He snatched the spear from the Egyptian's hand and killed him with his own spear. Such were the exploits of Benea, son of Jehoiada. He too was as famous as the three mighty warriors. He was held in greater honor than any of the thirty, but he was not included among the three, and David put him in charge of his bodyguard. The mighty warriors were Asahel, the brother of Joab, Elhanan, son of Dodo from Bethlehem, Shameth, the Haverite, Helaz, the Pelonite, Ira, son of Ikish from Tekoa, Abaiza from Anathoth, Sibukai, the Hushathite, Eli, the Ahohite, Mehurai, the Netophathite, Helid, son of Beuna, the Netophathite, Ithai, son of Ribai, from Gabiah in Benjamin, Benea, 
the Parathonite, Curi from the ravines of Gaash, Abiel, the Arbathite, Asmavath, the Buharamite, Eliaba, the Shealbanite, the sons of Hashem, the Geisenite, Jonathan, son of Shaki, the Hararite, Ahiam, son of Sekar, the Hararite, Eliphal, son of Ur, Hefer, the Mekarathite, Ahijah, the Pelonite, Hezro, the Carmelite, Neorai, son of Esbai, Joel, the brother of Nathan, Mipar, son of Hagrai, Zelik, the Ammonite, Neorai, the Berethite, the armor bearer of Joab, son of Zeruiah, Ira, the Ithrite, Garib, the Ithrite, Uriah, the Hittite, Zabad, son of Ali, Adina, son of Shiza, the Reubenite, who was chief of the Reubenites and the thirty with him, Hanan, son of Meuka, Joshaphat, the Mithnite, Uzziah, the Ashtarathite, Shama, and Jeio, the sons of Hotham, the Aurorite, Jediel, son of Shimrai, his brother Joha, the Tisite, Elio, the Meavite, Jerobai, and Joshaviah, the sons of Elnaim, Ithma, the Moabite, Eliel, Obed, and Jaesil, the Mesobeite.